For those of you like myself who have been perplexed and mystified for a very long time as to what does a tyre do, what pressure does the set, how do I adjust them, and altering numbers in the menus of certain simulators in order to create some kind of on-track miracle, you're in the right place. In this tutorial today, we're going to look at how to understand the role of tyres in sim racing in order to optimise their grip, pressures and efficiency on the track in order to make you quicker. My name's Dr. Scott, the sim racing surgeon. This is Trauma Team Racing. Let's go. First, let's look at some traction basics. Tires, to put it simply, make the car. It is amazing how many people in a road car will skimp on decent tires when they are the only things connecting your car to the road and keeping you safe. Remember this mantra, tires make the car. It is because of this level of importance to the car's performance that tires are closely regulated within many motorsport competitions. Let's look at how grip is created on a pneumatic tire, called as such because you pump the tire full of air. A tyre essentially grips the road by two means. Now, I want to point out this is extremely simplified. Firstly, by the molecular bonding of the rubber of the tyre to the road surface. The second way it grips a road is by the interlocking and interdigitation of the many, many irregularities on a road surface and the teeny tiny bits of rubber on a tyre surface, illustrated here in this diagram. Now this handsome chap is Isaac Newton, and he once upon a time came up with a load of laws and basically said that the force needed to move an object sideways across a smooth surface, in this case a race car, would not be larger than the down force exerted on the object, in this case a car. Tire manufacturers however had another idea, so Pirelli, Goodyear and all those wizards created tires to make sure that a racing tire can exert a braking, cornering or accelerating force greater than the force pushing down on the tyre. So we now know how a tyre exerts grip, but now we need to know how to measure it. Let's talk through some terminology. When a force is used for a cornering, it is a lateral force, seen here in the diagram on the left. When a force is used for accelerating or braking, it is called a longitudinal force, seen here in the diagram on the right. The grip of a tyre is dependent on something called the coefficient of friction. When you are hurling your car around a race circuit, the tyre property that is holding you to the track is this. The coefficient of friction is how you compare one tyre's level of grip against another. Simply put, it is a ratio of the maximum force a tyre can generate relative to the load pushing down, in this case, the car. The simplest way to think about it is the coefficient of friction essentially dictates your grip. To explain this, if a tyre has a coefficient of friction, Cf, of 1, the grip generated by the tyre is equal to the vehicle load. If the CF is 1.5, then the tyre grip is equivalent to 1.5 times the vehicle load. The take-home message here is, a tyre with a greater coefficient of friction exerts more grip. Simple? Got it? Good. Let's move on. Now let's look at tyre pressure and how this influences grip. If we look at this graph, here we have the coefficient of friction or grip on the y-axis and the pressure on the x-axis. What is demonstrated here is that as you increase the pressure, the coefficient of friction also increases to a point. However, once pressure is further increased, the graph then starts to tail off and you start to lose your grip. The key here is we are hunting for the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, the top of the graph, the ideal pressure for a given coefficient of friction. So how do we start tweaking those tyre pressures to maximise our level of grip? To start tweaking your tyre pressures, we're going to need to follow some simple steps. Number one, start with cold pressures recommended by either the tyre manufacturer or in the simulator's default setup. Here we're in iRacing and we've headed into the garage where we can see the cold pressures or the default tyre pressures upon commencement of this practice session. Now you want to head into the practice session and do a few laps to warm up the tyres. When the car comes off the track, you want to head back into the garage and measure the hot pressures. Now you want to work out here how much each tyre has gained from cold. The aim is to try and adjust the cold pressures so that the increase in pressure from cold to hot is the same on the front and rear tyres of the side of the car doing the most cornering. This would be the outside pair in the majority of corners. 
You want to get a map of the track you're racing, have a look and work out whether you are mainly turning left or turning right and then take it from there. The main aim of the game here is to make sure that the area of the tyre in contact with the track is even. We call this an even tyre footprint. Let's look at some examples of an overinflated and underinflated tyre. Here in the middle we have the ideal tyre pressure. Too much pressure, seen here on the right, will create a raised crown on the tyre as seen here. This means that the edge of the tyres are not in contact with the road and are taken out of the equation. If you have too little pressure, here demonstrated on the left, the edges will be sloppy and underfilled and the car will feel sluggish and imprecise. In this last section, we're going to look at what is camber and how to wield its power. The concept of what camber is, is important when it comes to tyre setup. When a tyre is upright on the road, pointing up, perpendicular to the road, it is said to have zero degrees of camber. Tilt the top of the tyre towards the car, you have negative camber. Tilt the top of the tyre away from the car, you have positive camber. The CF or grip changes with camber. You can adjust this, but there are trade-offs. The CF, coefficient of friction, increases when you move from zero to negative camber. The CF or grip decreases when you go into positive camber. You want to find the ideal camber to maximize your coefficient of friction, or your grip. But, the trade-off is that when increasing the camber, there is a trade-off with your braking and accelerating forces. The best camber is the one that offers the best balance of acceleration, braking, and cornering. So this has just been a small introduction into looking at tyre management. In our next tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to specifically adjust the coefficient of friction or grip further in order to change how the tyres handle on the racetrack and also the handling characteristics of the car. If you like this video, please check out my other videos, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye for now.